I'm gonna break into the video right here and say, uh, throughout the rest of the video, you will see how to replace the carburetor. I've done it three times now, and I can do it in under a minute. I'm super fast at it. But obviously, that wasn't the problem. I put in the Amazon carburetor. It didn't work right. I went out to the steel dealer, bought a steel carburetor. Still wasn't working right, but they said, hey, before you put this in, pull that spark arrestor out, check it. And I said, yeah, okay, because I've heard that several times on my chainsaws. Check the spark arrestor. It's never dirty. I didn't pull this out of here. I went ahead and put that brand new steel carburetor on this, started it up, had the same issue. I thought, oh, so I removed the spark arrestor and this is what it sounds like. Ran perfectly with the spark arrestor removed. I looked at that spark arrestor, it was all filled up. So I was like, ah, oh. I went back out to the steel dealer. I said, hey, you guys were right. I actually already put that new carburetor on, but the problem with the spark arrestor was all clogged up. Here's what that looked like. It was just completely caked with carbon and moisture. So I thought I was gonna have to buy a new one, but they showed me how you can torch and clean these back out. So there's my spark arrestor all cleaned up. You can see completely through it and that's how you should be able to uh, see through it. If you need to know how to torch it and clean it, they torched it until it was completely bright hot red, set it on a workbench and scraped at it with a uh, metal brush. And it's all cleaned out and ready to go back in. Where this is located is at the exhaust of your trimmer. Right inside this hole, it just screws right into the muffler. So I could have saved 40 bucks on that steel carburetor by just checking on the spark arrestor first. I didn't do that. So paid the price and uh, have a new carburetor that I didn't need. But now you guys have this information on the spark arrestor. So before you go out and buy that carburetor or order one off of Amazon, pull the spark arrestor out, see if it's all gummed up. See if when you start the trimmer without the spark arrestor, it runs regularly. And if it does, then you know you need to clean this out. If it doesn't, the rest of this video shows you how to replace the spark plug and the carburetor. Okay, so to catch you up, we've replaced the carburetor twice. The spark arrestor was what the problem was. We also replaced the air filter and the spark plug. Here's how she sounds. Hi, and welcome back to Purple Color Life. In this kind of tutorial video, we're gonna talk about how to replace the carburetor in your steel trimmer. This one is a steel FS55R. I've had this trimmer for about 20 years, roughly, and I've already replaced the carburetor once, so even though I've already done it, it's been a little while, but it's a really easy process. If you're not experienced with replacing parts like this, don't worry about it, it's gonna be super easy. We'll go step by step. These replacement carburetors are pretty cheap now. You can get them on Amazon. I'll put an Amazon affiliate link down below. I got this carburetor, the new air filter, and a new spark plug, all for around $20. So really inexpensive and really quick process to do. You can probably do this in about 10 minutes or less. Really easy. The tools I brought out with me, I've got a uh, eight millimeter wrench. For the spark plug, I've got a three quarter inch wrench and I brought a screwdriver that's Phillips and flathead. I don't remember exactly what tools I need, but let's work through this. It won't take us very long, it's getting dark. We'll go pretty fast. Start right here on the motor end of the, the uh, trimmer. Now the problem I've been having is it'll start up, but I never can reach full acceleration. Typically that means my carburetor's gummed up. I only run ethanol free gasoline in this, um, and usually the steel moto mix. But, you know, after 10 years or so, sometimes they still get gummed up. So we took off the air cleaner and the outside cap. Now I'm removing two little nuts that hold the air cleaner in place. I'm doing this on the tailgate of my Ford Ranger. It gives me a nice working space at a decent height. 
put my two nuts right there. Then this should come off just like that. You can see the uh, choke adjustment is right here in this part. Now this gives us access to the carburetor. It's on these two bolts and it can just slide out, but we want to remove the two spots that the fuel is getting in. So that's right here. You should just be able to pull this down off. I should have brought a pair of needle nose pliers. So I'll remember that that one was on the top. This one's on the bottom. And then as we pull this out, we're also going to have the throttle cable, which goes through this section right here. Now I'm going to leave this right here and go ahead and put the new one in right now. We'll put the throttle cable in its spot. There's a gasket behind it. We want to keep that gasket back there. Then start feeding this back right here. So I reattach that throttle cable. One, two fuel connections. You can see my throttle cable is all back where it goes. We're in good shape there. Orientation is the same. The hinge side goes on the right. This is the trickiest part of it, I guess. Your fingers aren't tiny, and my fingers are not tiny. It may have been better to use a nut driver that would have held this in place. There, we're started. This is just plastic, so you don't want to over tighten it. You can always check it and re tighten it later. Here's my new air cleaner. Put our cover door back on. Spark plug boot doesn't have a whole lot of space. Doesn't look too bad. Obviously the new one's gonna be better. Now I did not buy the steel brand kit. This is just an off brand and there's tons of different brands. I can't recommend one or the other. I'll put a link down below to something similar to this. I bought this as a two pack long ago when I replaced it the first time. Now this carburetor is gonna have no fuel in it so We'll need to prime it and get the fuel flowing into this primer bubble. There we're filling up. We're going to follow the normal starting procedure. We will choke it, prime a couple times. Oh, I can see a problem. If you look right in here, I don't know if you'll see that in the camera. Right in here, my cable is not connected to the carburetor. I had it connected, somehow it came off. So I basically just took that carburetor back off, attached the cable, it should slip into a little notch, and I went ahead and grabbed my eight millimeter nut driver so that I don't have to try to get my fingers down in here again. Filter only goes in one way, there's a sloped side. So hopefully this video saves somebody else $40 doing it on their own um, or more than that if you took it in for service. 
but it also did show you how to replace that carburetor, super easy to do, anybody can do it. Showed you how to replace that spark arrestor and clean it. Showed you how to change the spark plug and replace the air filter. So hopefully this was all informative and entertaining. If so, please give us a thumbs up down below. If you're wondering what creates the carbon buildup on that spark arrestor, they said there's a couple things. First of all, not running it at full throttle. So these are meant to be run at full throttle whenever you're trimming. Obviously walking between locations, it's okay to let it idle. But if you're one of those people that just uses a little bit at a time, they're made to be full throttle the whole time they're running. Another thing that might cause the problem, they said, is the gas you put in. So normally I use either Moto Mix or ethanol free gas with the steel two cycle oil mix. That stuff costs about $35 a gallon. So I tried this stuff from Rural King, Super S Super Fuel, 50 to one mix, two cycle oil and fuel. It is ethanol free. It is the right mix, 50 to one. But I'm wondering if that could have caused part of our problem. I'm not saying it did, but it does make, you, make me curious that after years of using Moto Mix, I tried to save a couple bucks, switched to this other stuff, and had a problem. So leave those comments down below if you've had any issues with different fuel types. We'll read through those, and hopefully it's helpful to somebody else. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time. Just a side note here, you're not saving as much money as you think on the super fuel. You can see this is 110 ounces. It's not a full gallon, whereas the Moto Mix is a full gallon, 128 fluid ounces. Oh, shit, shit, shit.